<laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Thank you all so very much for coming. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get it started. Um, for those who don't know me, I am Anne Marie Reed, and I am one of the KMAG co chairs. Uh, Ken Habernack, one of the co, -tre uh, co treasurers, and I uh, have two daughters here, eight, three, and six. <coughs> I'm Amy War, uh, I'm the other co chair, and I have a seventh grader. And then we have Melissa over here, and she's our secretary. No, I don't, I don't know. That would probably be overwhelming for you. No, so I did. Everyone, I have. Um, I know. I've seen names. If you haven't put name ta names on, I put name tags on. So I thought we'd be be kind and um, put our names on there for the first couple times, so she could see that. Um, all right. Do you, we'll go ahead and start with the principal's report. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, this right now we're working on. I was just mentioning um, that we're working on next year. The, our focus from now until the end of the year is next year, of course. So we're looking at course requests. I went to a meeting yesterday with the middle school principals. It was an update on House Bill 5 to tell us they have no update on House Bill 5. Um, however, you're going to be receiving a letter in the mail shortly from the district talking about course selection if you have a current 8th grader. We are um, going to be having a night at the start of February. We'll be getting that information out to you um, here on our campus talking about House Bill 5 and the endorsements and how the impact it's going to have on your child. Um, yes? Everyone may not know what House Bill 5 Thank you. House Bill 5 is the new legislation that came down that changes the graduation plans. We used to have minimum uh, recommended and distinguished. Now we have foundation, foundation with endorsement and distinguished. The difference between foundation with endorsement and distinguished is Algebra 2 and a level of science that the student will take. It's a higher level of science either through the Kate department, which is the Career and Technology department, or through the regular science department. Right now, the state still has not come out and made their final recommendations on what the advanced courses look like. However, the district has finalized what their endorsements for our district will look like. And so that's what the meeting's going to be about. And the district's going to be communicating that to all eighth grade parents. So expect to see that. Within the next two weeks, your eighth grade child will complete a career interest inventory <coughs> so that when they get ready to look at those endorsements, you can, you're can you going to get a login for that. You'll be able to go online and look at it and say, this is where you're showing an interest, <coughs> so maybe this is an endorsement area that you would like. Whatever happens, don't panic. You can always change the endorsement. It doesn't, it's not tying you into anything. Okay, that's the biggest thing to know. And when we have the parent night here, we'll have some high school people here too to talk us through that whole process. We'll give you plenty of notice for that. Um, the other thing I just wanted to brag on our school for a minute. Um, last week was the state middle school conference. We had over 45 visitors come, pay money, not to us, but to the middle school association, <laughs> to come and visit our campus to learn the best practices that we're doing here. Oh, it was wow. really exciting. And it was a great opportunity to showcase our awesome teachers. In addition to that, Patty Hill, our math department chair, did two presentations on flipping classrooms that were well received. And Jenna Martin and her advisory team, um, Mr. Schwa and Ms. Scott, assisted her in presenting on advisories and how we create our own advisory lessons here that are tailored to our Keeling community. Um, also, we had a presentation on our neighborhood side from Ms. Faley and Mr. Wiggins on that blended learning instruction that we've initiated this year. So Keeling was well represented at the middle school conference, I just wanted you to know that. Um, also, we're trying to get Patty to do her training session and to start training some teachers on flipping classrooms so that we can spread that here on campus. I, I will tell you if you, how many of you know Ms. Hill? Oh good, so a lot of you already know her. 
she is like a reformed smoker right now. You know how back in the day, if you're as old as I am, back in the day when people would quit smoking, you know, they became these zealots and they couldn't stand smoke anywhere, right? I get it. I'm a reformed smoker from way back when. But she is so passionate of what she, about what she's doing. She is determined she will never go back to teaching the old way, as she puts it. She is passionate about getting other people on board with this. So um, I'm seeing the changes in her classroom. And not that, I mean, Patty was always an awesome teacher, don't get me wrong. But what she's finding is she is truly able to reach every child now. Every child for her, not having the parents have to go back and reteach things, right? And real quick, do y'all know what flipped is? No, flipped is a really, it. really neat concept. I, I, you want to explain I'll it? I'll explain it. So the concept behind the flipped classroom is the teacher tapes themselves, not full on like this, but just like Patty tapes herself like writing on her paper. And you don't see her, but you hear her voice. And she talks through any direct teach that she's going to do. So the direct teaching of the concept or the lesson is what's videotaped. What she's found is what used to take her 45 minutes to an hour to direct teach in class because you have to wait for kids to take out their pencil, their paper, people are coming in late, um, there may be an announcement, whatever the distractions are. When you don't have those distractions and all you are is focused on that lesson, you are now 45 minute or an hour lesson becomes 10 to 15 minutes of direct teach. And the kids can pause it, right? So if I need to take notes or I didn't understand it, I can pause it and rewind and go back to that part. Plus it's now archived, so when it's time for the test, I can go back and watch it again. Then when the kids come to class, now's where they do what they would have done for homework. Now's where they do all the practice. And what she's discovered is what she would give for homework, she's giving more to the kids. They're accomplishing more in that 90 minutes right there with her, collaborating with their, with their peers and with her than they could ever do on their own at home or with parents. So it's totally changed homework. Homework's now this much, and the classwork is where the kids are actually thinking and engaging in math, instead of sitting passively taking notes, right? So it's really a cool thing, and, and she has, Patty is, if you know her, she's a perfectionist. So she spent a lot of times really trying to work out the bugs in her system. So now if a kid comes in, and let's say they didn't do the homework, which is rare, but let's say they didn't do it. She says, go sit down at that computer over there, watch the video, and when you finish, you come join us, right? Or if a student is absent, there's the lesson from the teacher, not anybody else. So what she discovered was, and, and I'm, I'm kind of taking her thunder at the moment, but she told the story about a young man who was in one of her algebra classes who normally it would have been the type of student that she would have said he needs to he needs to drop algebra he can't handle it because he doesn't have support at home for six weeks the child was not successful there was no one at home who could help him with it she thought about how she was going to transform and starting second six weeks flip the lesson she said hang in with me one more six weeks and let's see what happens he made an a the second six weeks an A the third six weeks, and an A on the midterm, which she increased the difficulty level of her midterm based on what the kids are able to do right now. And her grades went up. So, I mean, it's just, it's a great, I'm, it's a great testament to what she's doing. And so we're really hoping um, to kind of get that, get light that fire throughout the building. And I wanna uh, say thank you to KMAG for funding the iPads for her classroom because I think that that's just going to be such a tremendous <coughs> opportunity for the kids. And so, is there an idea that this will translate to other classes besides math? 
That's what we're hoping on. And we were talking about that. We we had a leadership team meeting on Monday afternoon, and that's where all the department chairs and team leaders and the administrative team <coughs> get together and we talk about whatever our issues are. We were talking about flipped classrooms, and we started brainstorming. You know, Miss Finkley, foreign language, was talking, we were talking about flipping foreign language and being able to teach, you know, when you're conjugating verbs and doing those direct teach things. Wouldn't that be great to do in a foreign language classroom? Or, or Mr. Schoff was talking about how they've been playing flipping a couple, and they're learning from that because it's a craft. You know, it's something that they're going to have to practice to get really good at. But yes, we're we're having those discussions on campus, and we're going to start something new here. Um, I talked to the leadership team about it. We're going to start twice a month now where um, we're going to have a teacher say, this is what I do in my classroom, um, and I feel comfortable presenting it to the rest of the school, and if you would like to come after school to learn this from me, um, this is the day I'm going to be doing it. So twice a month, we're going to offer professional development sessions for the rest of the staff, but by teachers here on campus. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. And Mr. Warren has started doing flipped classes. Yeah, well, he, just started he presented with like Ms. He Hill, and I, 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 was, I was remiss in not mentioning him. He did. He presented with Ms. Hill. And so he has just now started flipping his geometry classes. And Patty said she went into one of his geometry classes, and she will, she's, is a self-proclaimed not geometry person. And she's looking at the word problem application that the kids are doing in geometry that they never would have been able to do on their own. But with their peers being able to solve, and she's looking at the problem, and so she said her head was spinning. <laughs> so it was pretty cool. Uh -huh. So I, uh, knowing that I was coming to this meeting this morning, I was talking to Patty yesterday about this, the flipping, <coughs> and saying from a K-9 perspective, which I, this is not a role, that's why I just asked her, because I didn't know I was coming to the meeting this morning. How do we help other teachers flip. I said, what is the technology cost that you have incurred personally to be able to flip your classroom? And she said, I'm a perfectionist and you shouldn't tell anyone to do it my way. <laughs> I had this idea that there should be hamsters in my hand and Cthulhu's and it should be funny and there should be weird things. Nobody should do it my way. But she said there are other teachers across the school doing it with iPads, just an iPad, or you can just do it with software because depending on the subject area, I mean, you, you all are talking about it. So from our perspective, how, how do we help flip the classrooms? The thing that, that she said to me, which I really appreciated, is it's not, we're going to have to incentivize for teachers that are afraid to do it because it's a time commitment that she spent all last year and all last summer thinking right. about it. It's a huge time, because she has to plan that she all. She said it, but she's fun. like this crusader at this point. But I said, how, how do we at KMAG help you, <coughs> practically speaking, spread the, you know, gospel of flipping the classrooms, right? <laughs> because I'm totally on board. My son is in that class with a kid who was failing. Um, and so she said what, like if I said in an in-service or a, a time of teaching, how do we get other teachers? And she said, well, we need to showcase the ease of doing it versus m my way where you see you need to see classes that do it well and you need to see the simplicity of doing it, and there are like four different methodologies that she talked about how you can flip. But I think if we as a group, like that's why we're here is to advocate for better the magnet program. And so I just feel like this maybe needs to become a new area of like a new committee or something because if this is going to be somewhere that Keeling goes in the next five years, it's not going to be quick. And we're going to have to convince teachers, like even teachers within Patty's department, they're slowly converting. And she says, hey, come in during my off period, during your off period and watch my class and watch my video and watch my class and it's slowly happening but that there are a lot of teachers at Keeling and not all of them are math teachers so having one person in each department that's a quick adapter and then allowing the other teachers to see how they did it and then I don't I don't know how we I don't know how we as KMAG begin to incentivize that but I think it's something that we need to open the discussion on. And I, I think it's great for us to help. One of the best ways for us to help is honestly to, to talk to the teachers as you did and wait for them to come to us. For example, when Miss Hill realized that, that her school, her class would be benefited by mini iPads, she came to us and presented a request to get some mini iPads for the class. And that's when we, we were able to look at our funds and we were able to do that. And so I think historically that's how we, we've tried to work. 
and, and I realized we went right in there and I didn't introduce the new ma magnet director. This is Miss Diane Carter. <laughs> I was going to get to that. But, um, but we'll work with her very closely and she works with the teachers because they're the best ones. I mean, we don't know the best way to do that. All we can do is either help with volunteers if they need it, but certainly help with funding. And that's, you know, why I always talk about how we do a new <coughs> fundraiser. Um, that's a big way where our funds can go, whether it's through professional development um, and helping to fund some professional development, or if it's through um, purchasing technology that they don't have. But that's where we can work really closely with our magnet director, who works closely with the teachers to, to figure that out. So maybe we can just let make sure either directly or through Ms. Lowe and Ms. Carter that the teachers know that we were ready right. to support right. them and help them in any way that we can, right. whether it's through funding or volunteering or whatever whatever they need. So yeah, I guess that would just we would throw back to both of y'all and just say, you know, we're here, we want to support you, we think this is fun. I mean, really, honestly, it is a brilliant, brilliant concept because I, I've watched my son just a few times in geometry and they do, they do go back and they're writing notes and if they miss something, they go back and they, they look at it. And, and, and once the teachers have developed their, their videos, in subsequent years, all they have to do is hone it. Well, last year it looked like they didn't get this, so I, and they can take their previous one and hone it, and it's only going to get better. But, I, but thank you so yeah. much for bringing that up because, I mean, now my mind is sort of going on this too, but I mean, I think as parents, we can let the teachers know if our kids love the flipped classroom, yeah. Uh, you know, we can start uh, talking to the teacher, making sure the teacher knows that, and making sure other teachers, you know, well, you know, we can talk to other teachers about it and ask them their thoughts. On, I think also on letting that. the magnet director and the principal know so they have numbers right. to say, I've heard from X number of parents that Absolutely. they love this, that their kids love this, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Point, and, that, and that's what we were talking about, the leadership team meeting. I mean, Patty was talking about just the fact that she's, the time, her stress level is reduced because she doesn't feel rushed to get through all the material in a class period right, and having to reteach it, restate everything six times, but also the fact that she's not having to deal with parent concerns and complaints, let's be real, because of the homework load. And you know what else she said? She said at her office hours, now she has like one or two kids because they were absent. But other than that, the kids are getting it in class. They're not having to spend additional time after school and office hours. I'm so jealous of she didn't mention. So I'm saying, I'm a social worker. I can't help it. Laura has a comment back there. I just want to say that definitely this is something that PTA will get involved in because yes. I really see it benefiting neighborhood kids because, um, you know, historically there is some may not have quite as much support, you know, or able to get homework help at home. And so this would really make a difference, uh, you know, where they can get more of the homework help. And I know that's one thing that a, a neighborhood teacher once said to the parents uh, sitting at a meeting, said, you know, there's not much difference between your kids and the magnet kids, except the magnet kids do their homework. <laughs> yeah. That's what that's what she said to the, so it was something really interesting to know that if there's more help there or support with doing that kind of work thing. And we're addressing this across the school. This is this is being addressed across the school, absolutely. And one of the things that Patty said was, you know, she she was worried, is it an equity issue? It, what if the kids don't have access to the technology, right? And what she's discovered is, it's not a problem at all. That after school, the kids can go into any teacher's classroom and use their computer and watch the 10 or 15 minute video. We keep the library open till four o'clock. They can come down here and watch it. Almost every kid, no matter what, has a smartphone, believe it or not, with internet access. They watch it on their phones if they don't watch it on a computer. So what she found is what she thought was going to be an issue is not an issue. And what she feels like is that this is the great equalizer. Because now it doesn't matter if I have a parent at home who's an engineer. Now, I know that I get the help from the teacher in the classroom, no matter what the help I get at home. Do we know what the, um, most like for the neighborhood kids or even for magnet kids, if, what the access to internet is like? I mean, I just have a program computers for learning. There was, there's like even at like high school level, there's kids who don't have a computer at home or have a, I guess that's why the library can support them, but I guess that it would be a first thing after. And, take a late plus or whatever, but I mean, I'm just wondering if there's any kind of 
visibility into what access to computers like among the student body? You know, I don't, I couldn't answer that. That's a really good question, and I think we need to survey the students and find that out, and, and that's something that we'll do because I, I don't have a ready answer to that. I will tell you that at all of our housing projects that there are computer labs at each housing project so that they, there is a computer center with internet access for students as well if they live in one of those areas. We also have the Carver Library kids are finding ways to access the internet that what we're finding is the kids are going to figure that out and we can't let that stop us from doing this because we're afraid that they don't have access they're figuring it out and so our goal is okay how can we get on this bandwagon and how can we figure out how to make that time in class more valuable uh-huh do the lectures for algebra stay up online, like over the summer and forever. everything? So they will stay forever. Fresh, or maybe kids could start looking at them in advance. You know, I, I, I'm glad you asked that. The research, Patty and I talked a lot about research before she started this, and the definitive research really shows that it is better when the teacher develops their own videos. You know, you can go out to Khan Academy. And you can Google any subject and you can watch him teach it, right? And he does, a, he does a good job. But Patty brings in little nuances from her classroom. The kids for six weeks, the first six weeks, got to know how she teaches, right? This is how I relate to you. This is how I teach. These are my little quirks that I have. So they know that she has spent her time and energy creating this for them. And it show, research has shown that when a teacher does that, it's more impactful than if they just watch some other teacher's videos. And what happened was the algebra kids in other algebra classrooms started watching her videos, right? They were confused because their teachers may explain things a little differently than she explained them. Some of it was helpful. And it's certainly worth a try, but some of it was a little confusing. Well, and then you get into a situation where the child comes in and says, well, I learned this, and the teacher doesn't know what they're referring to because she didn't do it. So yeah. I think that would happen, too. So they realized it's not like you can say, okay, one teacher's going to create this <coughs> lesson, and one teacher's going to create this lesson. And that, you know, it's got to be a little more personalized than that. They're going to learn enough algebra. I would recommend looking ahead in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend that, either, especially because it's so, it's so, you could go off in the wrong direction. And not, if you don't get that first concept, that second concept's going to be even harder. And, and I don't know if she's planning to split the first six weeks. Like, that's something I don't know from her. Because I don't, she wants them to know her. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you can even start. She needs them to get her hilarious sense of humor so that they <laughs> laugh at their homework. That's part of her deal. It keeps them class. engaged in the lesson that they're watching. Because now they know her jokes. That's true. These are inside classroom jokes, right? The hamster thing. So. Do we have any other questions? And I apologize. Before starting, I, I always try and say, and I forgot this time, that we do have a video. Um, the video is available on YouTube. I will put it out in there. So just, just to be forewarned that that everything that we say is visible to anybody who would like to um, to listen in. So. Um, and also now I'd like to get and introduce Ms. Carter, who was our new magnet director. Yay! Very, very, very excited to have her here. I saw her on the showcase <coughs> night, which she'd only been here four or five days, and she handled it like a pro. So, <laughs> impressed. Excellent. Well, hello. Um, I am uh, insanely excited to be here. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about me, um, I'm guessing you guys would probably like to know. Um, I have a, 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 a pretty diverse background as far as my career goes. Um, I actually started my first two years of teaching right here at Keeling. Um, at, yes, I know. I was so excited to look at the uh, well, pictures. pictures. Yeah, yeah. I got to look at the big old pictures on the wall and find myself the two <laughs> years, and I was like, oh man, really? The hair? Um, so. Um, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, when I was here, I taught uh, PE. So I got to see everybody all together and uh, was just fascinated with the opportunity for a sociology experience, experiment. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I absolutely loved uh, seeing kids play 
and uh, had a blast and sometimes wonder why I, like I got paid to play all day. I'm not sure why I ever left that. But, um, but uh, at that time my goal was to uh, teach biology and coach tennis in high school. So I was presented with that opportunity at Aikens High School and uh, then ended up, uh, I was at Aikens the year Aikens opened and then um, stayed through 2008 um, and was one of the academy coordinators while I was there as we redesigned into academies into smaller learning communities and was big, a big part of that whole research and implementation process and had a blast. Uh, I taught a variety of things while I was there, um, uh, mostly biology, a little bit of IPC and uh, learned a lot that year, let me tell you. Um, and then also personal fitness and team leadership, uh, which is uh, Flip Flippin's class. Um, so, uh, and then I was ready to be an assistant principal um, and got my first and only job as an assistant principal at uh, Westlake High School. So I was then at Westlake for five and a half years and here I am. So, um, so you know, I've, I've I had a chance to work with about every kind of person you can imagine at some point along the way. Uh, whether that person is a parent, a kid, a teacher, whoever they are, um, I got to, to work with a variety of people and I've, I, have, I will stand true to uh, what I, I knew when I started this and I still believe now I absolutely love people um, and I absolutely love to learn. So those are probably the two most important things for you to know about me. Um, but uh, I am insanely excited to be here. It's so cool to be back and actually I, part of my learning curve is not where things are. <laughs> um, I am still learning. I've, I, just in case anyone asked, I brought all of the dates for all of the pieces of the application process because I'm still learning those dates and pieces. Um, but, uh, but you know, there's, there's at least a, a piece of that learning curve that's not there because there are still some familiar faces and uh, it's been a lot of fun so far um, and that's I was gonna say the showcase I was amazed um, I, I, I as we were approaching the showcase um, I was listening to uh, Julie Carolyn tell me about what was gonna happen and everything and I said so basically everybody's all lined up and the teachers and students are awesome so it's gonna be a great night and she said, yeah. And I said, okay, there you go. Great. <laughs> and um, that was true, let me tell you. Um, I had a blast walking around. Um, I, got, I, I went in several of the classrooms and got to hear the kids tell me about uh, what they're doing in class and, and not just see how excited our kids were to, to share that, but to watch little fifth graders' faces just go, oh, I mean, they were pumped. So um, it was a great night um, from my perspective and um, had a great time. Um, and I was trying to think what else might you guys want to know and I thought I would tell you that uh, so far, uh, well, last weekend was our first round of the admissions test on campus and um, that was on Sunday, and we tested uh, 163 kids here. Uh, Fulmore tested on Saturday uh, 79 kiddos um, that were applying to both Fulmore and Keeling. So, so we're at about 242 so far, uh, admissions test-wise, and uh, and then we've got a little over 100 complete applications so far and a whole lot more teacher recommendations floating in that I'm sure applications will be coming in to, to pair up with. Um, and I've, uh, I think I've pretty much wrapped my head around the process. And are you turning lights I was on? trying to yeah. figure out how to turn the lights back on. The lights are the middle of the way. You have to wiggle. They're in the right spot. Yeah, it's over there. there That's going to look hysterical on the video. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you like turn I'm going to slip back? out now. But I'm going to try to myself. Are you going to dance all the way? I'll, I'll do that on okay. the way. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Disregarding the admissions process, um, how many, and I don't even know how 
this is all worked out, but do you have any idea how many kids they'll be admitting sixth, seventh, and eighth grade for next year? Um, that's a number that I can't tell you for sure right now. Um, and actually, it's funny, as, as I was walking the dog this morning, um, <laughs> it wasn't during a running point when she, she's my trainer. She's like, it's time to go faster. So, um, I, you know, I don't know for sure um, exactly how that's determined every year yet. Um, but because I'm, you know, we have control over how many magnet kids are here. We don't control our, our neighborhood population. So I'm assuming that we've got some sort of ratio that, uh, and, and we need to, there will be a neighborhood projected enrollment, I'm sure, um, and then we'll kind of tweak our number based on that. Um, so, yeah, I know that's a horrible answer. Well, we got Renee yeah, here who, who's I, been I shadowing for the last couple years. Numbers, um, but like she said, that could easily change. I had always heard um, that basically they just kind of, the neighborhood kids enrolled, of course, first, and then they just filled up the building with magic kids. But I didn't know I mean, that, how that broke down. I just don't think that would happen because the, the acceptance goes out in March, right. and the kids aren't necessarily right. sure. signing up again. I don't know. It's the projected. So, yeah. I, I believe yeah. when we started in sixth grade, my daughter's an eighth grader, I believe they accepted 250 kids. That's not, that's Last year, that's they accepted 265. But they sent out for 300 acceptance because on average, it's, I believe it was 18% or 2% last year, 18% of the people that don't accept. And it's extremely yeah. consistent, you know, yeah. that percentage is very consistent. consistent. Yeah, I thought they tried to fill 250 seats. Right. You know, usually, you well, they increased it last in the, year. In the district caps, on some level, I mean, they don't want to grow the program. And, and that's for the sixth well, graders, and I think it was like 27th graders and three or four or eight graders. Yeah. Personally, it's not the same because there's yes. so much fewer applicants than that. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, they, get, they get 700 and some odd yeah. applications and they admit around 300, 250 to 275. And you shadowed, I think, 500. We shadowed 565 last year. Does anyone else have a question either about the application process or about Ms. Carter or about the magnet program? What kind of dog do you have? <laughs> oh, very important. Um, I have a Havanese, which, and she's not groomed like a Havanese. They're the ones that would have like really long hair. She looks like, I don't know, a fuzzy little mutt, and she's adorable. And then a Golden Doodle, Ellie, who's a puppy. Ooh, she's the trainer. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Is there um, any news? I know a couple of KMAG meetings ago, they were said that the CAC was entertaining having Chinese next year as an offering. Oh, I don't know. Um, I can't answer that with 100% certainty, but I, I am under the impression that that's the plan. I'm on the CAC. We did approve that to the citizen to approve the recommendation, so that should be. And then it has to go to, doesn't it have to go to the, the administration, to the district for approval? Well, I would imagine they'd be, they'll be probably be getting a teacher, right? Because since so many of the high schools are doing Chinese, it makes right. sense. Yes. Yeah. We already, Thank sorry, you. go ahead. So the, I have a question about how the teacher is selected in general. Um, like a few years ago, there was a lot of active discussion about sharing a Chinese teacher with Lhasa. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know whether it's was still there, but um, I'm gonna she was like a very part-time, the class was tiny, and because of the feeding problem, since no kids taking Chinese here, they thought that would increase her population a lot more in Lhasa, so, but there was no takers here, because it was something happened that didn't make it happen. Real quick, anyway, I'm, I'm just, just going to repeat that because I'm not sure that that was loud enough for that. But your question was about whether we're going to be sharing the teacher with Lhasa well, because they currently have it available at Lhasa, but it's been not been one of the more popular classes largely because a lot of the kids going into there have already taken one language and and Mandarin wasn't an option. So do you know of any? Yeah, I mean, that that's always a possibility. We share other teachers with other schools. Um, right, German's one of them. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's just a, a, one of the many pieces of, of the puzzle of staffing. So we would just, I mean, that's certainly a possibility. So, you, so we, we would just basically 
wait for the district to tell us who is available to teach, or, or does Keating hire? Um, I mean, it, we're not told this will be your Chinese teacher, um, but at the same time, we have to consider a lot of factors that may result in us not having a whole lot of choices. Uh, I mean, if, if we only have one or two sections, that do, certainly doesn't justify us just hiring one person. So, it, I mean, there's just a lot of factors that go sure. into it. So, we will we will figure it out and have the best possible person there, no doubt. So, so does that mean that the Spanish for Spanish speakers class is it, also recommended? Yeah, I was going to say too. So we also made a recommendation to <laughs> have Spanish for Spanish speakers in one section of Chinese to start. Let's see, that it could look different come next fall. Um, that was, that was the is this Spanish for Spanish speakers for Can you all speak students? up just a little bit for our videos? Is the Spanish for Spanish speakers class only for new students to Spanish, or would that be included for someone who's already taken Spanish oh. once? Then? It can be taken on native Spanish, native Spanish speakers, because it, it'll be in advance. It's almost like starting in Spanish, too. So. Okay, thank you. And I was excited to hear that that is going to exist, because I've seen some awesome things take place in native speaker classes. Very cool. Question perhaps for a future meeting, but I have a sixth grader who wants to take five different languages. <laughs> and, and I would like some guidance to help him navigate that. I know in the in the spring they, they talk about math for next year. Is there anything that kind of showcases the different languages, helps kids understand what the differences are, maybe help guide the parents a little bit? That's a great idea. And it, um, <clears throat> I would when, really when do we? I can't remember this because I'm so old. Oh, when is it? When do the kids pick the language? For seventh well, grade. Have, have the Jewish parents Jewish. of seventh graders, parents of sixth graders, have y'all picked a language? Well, those who aren't taking it <laughs> in sixth grade, have y'all picked a language? <laughs> What's that? It's whenever all the continuing students do their choice. Well, right, but when is that? Does anybody know? Should be pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. end of January. Okay. End of January. <laughs> I can see if we can get something arranged. We don't. We weren't going to have a meeting um, in two weeks we, because we didn't really have a sub subject for it. But I can see whether that's something we can arrange. If y'all do, y'all think that would be something helpful? I can. I can see. Where we we can sort of work with you and see what specific, but it would really be helpful just to understand what are the options, what are the. You know, I heard the rumors that it's really really hard. Well, I know it's just a rumor. Well, that one has been around since I was in high school. It's a long time. Also, what high schools they could feed into, you know, because not every high school has every language. That's a great point, too. Yeah. Good point. So. Um, I'll, I'll work with you and we can see if we can get that up um, and maybe add in a, a meeting before choice sheets are due. All right. Does anyone else have a question or comment or anything? <coughs> Thank you. Um, we're going to go into our committee reports right now. Fundraising, is Michelle here? Okay. We're, we're still, the main push of our fundraiser is over, but we're still, you know, looking out there. We've actually had some more really fantastic requests come in, so we're going to have to stop and look and see what we can afford and what we can't afford. Um, and so if, if you haven't um, already donated, we are still keeping, we are obviously still accepting checks. Um, you can give us more of an update on our treasurer's report on where we are and how we stand. Uh, Jenny, is she here? Book Cub, I don't think we have an update for that. Um, I took off Showcase and then realized that we really should say that Showcase is now over, but it went really, really well. And very thankful for Kaki and Rachel for taking that on. There were a lot of parents there. Um, and I know that we had little stickers that said, I'm a parent, ask me. And I was walking around with my fifth grader forgetting that it was on and parents were they're excited to talk to other parents too you know they're excited to talk to the kids and the teachers but also the parents and so that was really helpful and we're really grateful to them for putting that together Julie I think I saw you walk in I'll come up here oh thank you <coughs> they can see um, I don't have anything about teacher support or magnet whatever I'm listed as um, <laughs> but I do have a little um, um, announcement about an evening with Dr. Leonard Sachs and he has written Boys Adrift, Why Gender Matters and Girls on the Edge and it's the half day director's group of preschools that are putting this on but it, it, he's going to talk about more than just preschool issues. So some of the questions, how much screen time is too much time for any age child, um, should I let my toddler play with my iPhone, 
what are the effects of growing up in virtual worlds? Which video games or TV shows are okay? Should I be my daughter's Facebook friend? Yeah, so how much time is too much time playing video games? So um, it is on February 17th from 7 to 9 p.m. and I will put this in the Hornet Herald. Awesome. As well. Thank, Thank you so you much. Really that good. sounds fantastic. These are all really good questions. Yes. Um, and then we get to shadowing. Renee. All right. Actually, and if you could come up, that would be helpful because then they can see your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, shadowing so far we have 85 people who have, done, who have um, applied to shadow and the unfortunate thing that has happened with shadowing is we had set it up so that everybody would, with computers could do an online shadowing application. Well, unfortunately it's not working out that way. And so I received, was it 65 from Julie um, this week where we had to um, input the information. But I got around that by all I do is take their emails and I send the application to them via email and I make them do it online. So it gets done that way and that way we don't have to punch in all the information. Um, the applications coming in are a little slow right now, but I anticipate that by the end of this week and next week we will be bombarded. Like I said, we had 565 last year, and since I started this in sixth grade, each year has increased, and so I suspect that this year may increase even more. We start shadowing on the 27th, so a little over a week, we'll start shadowing. And if already a volunteer spot. Yes. yes. There is, if you see, have um, seen the Hornet Herald, there is a volunteer spot. We will appreciate any help. It's only 30 minutes in the morning or the afternoon. We would appreciate any help that you can give us. Um, you can speak for that. You are a, she helps a tremendous amount with that. It's fun. And so. <laughs> it is. It's really it's just 30 minutes and it's here in the library and they're always, they're so excited to be here. and. You know, it's a lot of fun, and the parents are nervous. <laughs> and, um, and I'm here in the morning there, and so. in the afternoon, so yeah. if, if you have questions or concerns about doing it, don't worry about it. Um, there'll be somebody here who knows what's going on. Um, and the other thing is, I wanted to mention this, I had a person who was going to work with me as a, a co-chair to help me out, but unfortunately that has fallen through. And so if there's anybody, and had mentioned something to me also. Um, if anybody is interested in learning the process, jump on really fast because <laughs> the, we're working on it right now and it's a good time to learn. I, I, won't, I won't lie to you, it, it is work. I mean, it does take some time and especially through the month of January when you're getting all the applications in, it takes a little bit of time, but it's, it's all automated now, so you just have to learn how to work the program and that process. So, and, and the thing to remember is here at Keeling, and I think it's different at Fulmore, shadowing is almost completely volunteer driven. There just aren't the resources on campus to handle 500 kids, 20 a day, coming in and out, making sure that they get on the bus, making sure that they get matched up with the shadow. And, it, and for most of you, I mean, how many kids, how many of you had kids at shadow? Almost, almost all of us. This is a, is a fantastic program. It's a great way. And just give a little back. You don't have to come, you know, every week. If you can come one day, just sign up for that one day. If you can come Monday, sign up for that day. It's not a whole lot of time. You're generally here for about 40, you get here around 7 o'clock. You leave by 7.45. It's not a lot, but it makes this program keep going on. And we want to make sure that we, we you know, pay it back or pay it forward, I guess is what it, we're doing. Mm -hmm because it is a great program and without without the parents we can't the school just can't handle having 500 kids come in and walk around yeah and it's it's useful to have all the slots filled because that keeps me available because i have to get students arranged to, if they're testing and they're not testing get it matched up with their host and so um, it frees me up to be able to do those things so Please. <laughs> so, yeah, please sign up for volunteer please spot sign up if you're it. interested in helping her out. This is Renee started it. I did, started it with her in sixth grade, and she just took it and made an amazing, so. just amazing changes. But she now has an eighth grader, and so we are going to need somebody to kind of 
follow in her footsteps so that we can continue the program on next year. Yeah, Thank so if you. there's anyone in the room or out there on video who is um, <laughs> you know, looking for a volunteer opportunity for next year, you know, it's really important. Um, you don't have to do it by yourself. Grab a friend who you trust and we'll work with you. And um, if you can, um, if you're interested, let us know and we'll hook you up with Renee to, to um, see how it's going this year. It'll get you on the ground running for next year. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about shadowing? I have a question about the online shadow application. Can the kids do that before they actually get their application into the school? Um, yes. But, but you have you need to have your application in by the 24th if you're going to shadow. Because we um, take, what I do is I compare the people who have sent in their applications with the people who are online to make sure that they're following the um, 24th deadline. Is the application to shadow online in kind of made public? Is it in the packet? It's, it's, if you read the shadow application, it's at the very top. It says it has the website. Uh -huh. right. Do we have any other questions? All right. Uh, new parent reception, new student. I think, is Brooke here? Yeah. Okay. I, there you go. <laughs> I'll stand up. I'll stand up to say that I uh, I don't have any news yet because I'm going to meet with Diane Carter and we're going to talk about. <laughs> Uh, Sandra Marks has done it for years, and I am going to be learning from her this year and taking over because I have a sixth grader and she has an eighth grader. Uh, it is during the math tests for the admitted students. They have the receptions, and it. When my I have a tenth grader at Lhasa. When he was a sixth grader or an, a rising sixth grader, it was a meet and greet type of an event that was very. It felt like a reception. In the past it, few years, and I didn't know this because I haven't. I wasn't here with another kid. It, it sort of morphed into a presentation, and I am personally hoping to take it back the direction of a very informal meet and greet because we've got a billion presentations, and that's not where you get your deepest felt needs met about stress about the magnet program. And our my goal personally is to help every parent that is sitting here for two to three hours or an hour and a half hour long their math testings to diffuse some of their issues or their perceived issues with how hard healing will be, right? To talk to, because experience is the best teacher, right? So I want to have quite a large number of parents, and perhaps some students, I'm not really sure, I'm gonna to have to talk to you about that, to say that are current, maybe even current eighth graders who can help these nervous fifth grade parents feel a little more comfortable with what their child is about to do, because middle school, no matter what middle school you go to, is a huge transition, so there's that. And then there's healing, and I mean, you hear things, right? Oh, algebra, and all oh, this, and it, anyway. So that's my goal. The other thing that I wanted to say about shadowing is that I am taking over in the same vein of, I've got a sixth grade parent, I have three years here. I am taking over the parent volunteer coordinating side of shadowing, which is called shadow wrangling. I'm gonna wear boots and a hat. And, um, I'll get the rope. Thank you. So I am learning this year from Sandra on the, on the receptions and then on the shadowing link side from Ann Phipps. So if anybody wants to learn shadowing from Renee, I, I'm, I mean I will be a partner with whoever that person is because I'm here for three years so I'm just saying thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you yeah. Brooke, for taking on all those, um, all those important duties. We really appreciate it. Okay, I think that's all of our committee reports. Does anyone have any questions for KMAG? I realized that I skipped over approval of minutes from December 12th meeting. So, um, Melissa, did you send out some copies or from the, there should be some, we have some copies for last there December 12th. There should be 12th. copies, but one copy on each table. Um, if you've taken a minute to look over that, um, and actually, why don't you take a look at it and can you, a minute for the minutes. I like it. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Does anyone have any questions? Can we get a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, Laura DiCarlo uh, approved it. Do we have a second? I second. Gita said seconds it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, they're approved. Now we can, and I also said introduction of new magnet direction. Actually, that was supposed to say magnet director. Uh, and we're not That's going in good. a new direction. Don't worry. Don't, don't freak out. If we are, I don't. All right, can you tell us, yeah, can tell us about the uh, treasurer's report. Okay, not a whole lot to uh, talk about. We've got four or five uh, expense reimbursement requests as well as 
<clears throat> some approvals will go on in executive session after this. Um, on the mini I iPads, we're, those have been ordered now. We should have them in a week or so for Ms. Hill. Uh, but we it was basically dealing with a sales tax issue because it's going to be like $800 of sales tax. We were working really hard to try to get that worked out. So that's uh, good news, but it is a significant piece. We did have $1,100 of uh, donations in December, so we're at basically 80% of our, our goal um, at $28,000 roughly. Um, and a big part of that is uh, employer matching. Uh, so we haven't had all the matches come in, but we're expecting about $2,700 worth. And I don't know if people think about that a lot, but usually uh, for larger companies, they'll do a match on your donations. So if you have donated or if you're thinking of donating, uh, you may want to look into whether or not they'll do that because it does add up significantly for the school. And that's all I have. Do you have any questions for the treasurer? Um, for our co-chairs report, the only thing I would like to say is we are going to have in February, February 13th, um, Ms. Hill is going to come here and talk about for you sixth grade, sixth grade parents uh, about the math options. This is always a very hotly discussed issue. Should my child go into algebra? Should my child not go into algebra? And so she will be here to answer um, all of the questions that we might have towards that. If you are a seventh or eighth grader parent, feel free to, I would love for you always to come because it's also helpful to hear the parents. As well. Because there will be eighth grade options, right? Right. The right. new uh, the eighth grade options variations on well. algebra. That's right. The eighth grade is changing as well. So, so that's going to be um, February thirteenth. <laughs> is there anything else? Okay. Kristen. Oh, Laura. I didn't think you report. I don't think Kristen's here. Kristen's not here. You want to get, go ahead and give it, Laura. Okay. Tomorrow is really important. It's the MLK Day of Service. So at nine forty. Yeah, Laura, can you come up to the front? Tomorrow's. Friday. Friday. Tomorrow is Thursday. Uh, I was like, wow, tomorrow is Friday, today is Thursday. I'm talking about Saturday, January 18th, I think, um, is the MLK Day of Service. So what that is, is um, we are going to be gathering in the cafeteria. We have gotten a five, our treasurer, Jillian Redford, got a $500 donation from ATV. So there's going to be lots of good food. And hopefully we're going to have students from UT and Houston Tillotson last year. We filled the cafeteria with volunteers. And then what we do is we all go out all around campus, down Kamal, all, all, actually last year I did registration, so I stayed in the cafeteria. I'm not even sure where everybody goes. Um, and we're going to be doing some grounds work as well, just cleaning, just giving back to the community. Especially, you know, most of us don't live in this neighborhood and we come, we bring our kids here every day for school. We want to give back to the neighborhood and, you know, in keeping with MLK's mission, you know. So um, bring, if you um, want to do gardening, bring some gloves. I'm getting mulch delivered today. I'm the buildings and grounds chair. So uh, my goal is to get things cleaned up in the front, but uh, we will also have rubber gloves for people just cleaning up trash and things like that. Okay, so that's 9.45 to 12.45 on Saturday. And then we also are just always making sure everybody knows about the Keeling Center stage date, which is April 5th. So mark your calendars now at Spider House Ballroom, an adult-only event. Uh, going to be bands and good food, Ruby's Barbecue, and there will be jambalaya, a vegetarian option. And that is going to be our big fundraiser, silent auction, live auction. Just a good time will be had by all, hopefully. So I just want everybody to have that date. So um, I don't think there's, I'm just looking back to what we said last time, if there was anything else PTA related that we need to mention. Uh, we're having an Austin, I'm also the vertical team coordinator for McCallum High School for all the schools that feed to McCallum and half of the students, well half of the neighborhood students here feed to McCallum, the others feed to Eastside Memorial, but so Keeling is in the McCallum vertical team. We are having a meeting tomorrow, so just to let you guys know about that, that there is this thing called the vertical team where all the principals, PTA presidents, parent support specialists come together and they share information. So that's at Ridgetop tomorrow from 9.30 to 11, kind of an FYI. Does anyone have any questions and for the Diane's PTA? Diane's coming to that in place too. Just left. <laughs> Anything? And it's never too late to become a member. And if anybody has any questions, I know last year the directory was always a big deal. The directory is online. If you didn't get your online directory, I, can, I, I can't personally help you. I can get you to the person who could help you. Thank you so much, Laura.
Um, real quick before we're done, done. Um, I, I realized after I sat here, you know, you always say something and then you sit and think, okay, what did I say and what did I forget to say? It's not um, a labradoodle, is it? What's that? It's not a labradoodle. No, she really is a labradoodle. Um, <laughs> that's a good one, though. Um, I, you guys, you guys are amazing. Um, seriously, I have heard absolutely nothing but wonderful things from everybody I've talked to about the parent support. Um, and I, you said something along the lines of, you know, I mean, we can't do it without you. Um, and I've been a part of communities where parents were very involved and supportive, and I've been a part of communities where that wasn't necessarily the case. And um, I promise you, everybody benefits tremendously when you guys are active and supportive. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and what I forgot is the I listed off the people that made the showcase all be so fabulous, and I left parents off. Um, you're right. I don't know what... Thank goodness there were parents there to answer a lot of questions because I think that means I got fewer since it was day like <laughs> three or four and I didn't know half the answers anyway. So anyway, uh, it's a great thank you guys. Community, we, we have a huge respect for, yeah. for the schools so that works well. well. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions? All right, perfectly on time. If they were going to adjourn, thank you all so very much for coming.